Hello, and welcome to the Rising Beyond video series on what you need to know in order to support survivors of relationship abuse without victim blaming. So for this uh, video series, I asked hundreds of survivors of relationship abuse, and yes, I am talking about physical abuse and all of the non physical abuses that are done within relationship abuse. So I asked these survivors for what you need to know, what you don't understand, and that that's making it so you are unable to really support them in a way that supports their healing process and that is non-victim blaming. And so I am basing this on my decades plus of experience as well. I am a licensed professional counselor. I run a small group private practice in Colorado. And I also run the Rising Beyond Community, which is a community for um, survivors of relationship abuse to connect and to heal and to learn together. Um, I am the creator of the Rising Beyond podcast, but in my experience, these things are also needed to know by, again, support people, family, and friends, but also professionals that are working within this space that work with survivors of relationship abuse. And what I've seen is there is a really strong link to the length of time that a survivor of abuse takes to heal and the number of safe and supportive people they have in their world. And so I'm hoping that this will help you, this video series will help you be one of those safe and supportive people in their world. So I want to start this first video in this series with a quote from a survivor. And the quote is, the secret keeping space is where the abuse happens. So I wanna share that again. The secret keeping space is where the abuse happens. So secrecy is what really keeps abuse, you know, it makes it allowed to continue. It is allowed to be maintained through the secrecy. And so what you might not know, right? What you may not see what's going on, and so you may say something like, my gosh, I can't believe it. They seemed so nice. Gosh, you all seemed so happy together. You seem like the perfect family. And what that is, is showing the secrecy of these relationships and how abuse works. And it needs to remain secret behind a mask, behind the mask of the perfect family, the mask of the, you know, perfect husband or wife, whatever that may be, that mask creates secrecy and they do not want you to see behind the mask. So you might be thinking like, gosh, why didn't you tell me sooner? Well, there's so many reasons. There are repercussions if they share the secret. There are repercussions if you see behind the mask. There are consequences put in place. People don't believe them when they tell these stories or they start to share because of the mask, because of how it's been kept secret, they're not believed. And so when they have that experience of trying to share, they're not believed, they're going to stop sharing. And it is going to basically support or promote the false narrative of their partner that no one will believe you or that, see, you're the one that's crazy. So when you don't believe, that is what happens. It allows the secrecy, the mask to continue. They've also been conditioned to believe it's their fault and to not share what's going on, right? To keep working on it, to be a better wife, be a better, better mother, be better so that the abuse will stop but that's actually not what happens. It is not their fault. They can't do anything better. The abuse is gonna continue whether they're better or not. So this idea that it is a couple's problem or a family problem that needs to stay behind closed doors, that allows the secret to continue. 
it allows this, you know, children to be brought up in a home where there's abuse. And you might think, gosh, why don't children say anything? They're also conditioned to keep this secret. It's no one else's business. They maybe have been overtly told not to share, or they have maybe started to share or stood up to their parent who's abusive, and they had a consequence for doing that. So they'll keep the secret too. They know it's safer to keep the secret, which seems crazy that it's safer to keep the secret, right? Because then it's harder to get out. But the minute you start seeing behind the mask, then guess what? They're going to start isolating their victim from you because you could be supportive. You could help. And so I'm going to kind of end with, if you are going to protect the secret, enable the secret by when you see something, hear something, you turn away or you automatically don't believe because it's not your experience. You are in fact perpetrating abuse. You are supporting the abuse to continue. And so what you take from this video is believing when they start to share, keeping your eyes open, and just understanding that the secrecy and that mask is what keeps all of this going during the relationship and post-separation abuse, which is after the relationship ends, which that will be in another several videos in this series. So if you want to be a support person for someone who's experienced abuse, someone in your life who you love and care about, and you just want the best for them, subscribe below so that you get notifications of the next episode of this video series when it goes live. And if you know someone who could benefit from this, share it, right? That in and of itself, the sharing of what this looks like is not allowing the secret to continue. There's so many myths and misconceptions about domestic violence and relationship abuse that only supports the perpetrator of, because if we don't understand, that helps enable secrecy. So thank you so much for watching this video, sharing this video, and doing your part to support someone who needs your support.